Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to the phenomenon known as the Milankovitch cycles and their effects on the glaciation periods or the ice ages on planet Earth. And specifically we're going to talk about a recent study by Stephen Barker and his team that potentially discovers the exact cycles responsible for the glaciation periods and even predicts the beginning of the next cycle or basically the next ice ages. And so let's talk about some of these recent discoveries in more detail, but obviously first let's briefly discuss the ice ages and how we believe it all started. And while there is actually an older video on the channel that should be in the description that discusses this in more detail, but today scientists believe that approximately two and a half million years ago, when the planet was going through some kind of a minor cooling period, there was actually an enormous collision with an asteroid anywhere from one to four kilometers in size that surprisingly left no crater but it left behind a lot of leftovers which have been actually collected around certain areas in the Pacific Ocean. And it hit the planet somewhere right here. Today this is referred to as the Eltanin impact. The impact that most likely generated an enormous amount of evaporated water and huge tsunamis, signs of which have been discovered in various locations. Surprisingly here, the waves seem to be at least a few hundred meters in height. And so this very sudden disruption of the atmospheric composition is believed to have triggered the first ice age. Or basically the formation of the ice caps, mostly in the northern hemisphere. And very likely because of the amount of water and the amount of salt suddenly introduced into the upper atmosphere. This very likely disrupted the ozone layer, this also very likely dramatically shifted the ice shelves, but most importantly caused the increase of the Earth's albedo or reflectivity, thus causing the planet to cool down. But instead of just staying permanently frozen, our planet actually started a kind of a cycle. A cycle with a period of approximately 100,000 years. Usually we call these glacial interglacial cycles. Basically a kind of a periodic advance and retreat of the ice shelves in the northern hemisphere. And though at first it was not clear why this is happening, in the early 20th century, the Serbian mathematician Milutin Milanković proposed a potential explanation. And here it involved various cycles in regards to Earth's orbit. For example, cycles involving the changes in eccentricity, which seem to happen every 100,000 years. Or changes in the obliquity, or essentially the tilt of the planet, which seems to occur every 41,000 years. Or maybe also axial precession, the wobble of the planet, which seems to change anywhere between 19,000 to possibly 26,000 years. This one is actually kind of funny because every single paper seems to give me a slightly different value. But we'll come back to this in a few seconds. And though at first this remained kind of hypothetical, it was eventually proven to be true with extremely robust geological evidence in 1976. So basically here paleoclimatic records definitively confirmed that the cycles seem to play some role. Specifically the role in regards to the glaciation periods because in some sense they actually did match. With the last glaciation cycle beginning approximately 100,000 years ago but ending 12,000 years ago, during which for approximately 10,000 years a lot of mountains suddenly started growing huge ice sheets covering most of the northern hemisphere. And the cycle eventually ended approximately 12,000 years ago. So essentially now we're in the so-called interglacial period. But here the question was of course, so what exactly starts the ice formation and how is it that it happens so fast? Interestingly, in a slightly older paper, scientists also wanted to find out why ice sheets were able to form in certain locations where we actually don't expect them at all. For example, places like Canada are expected to have them, but not places like Scandinavia that should have actually remained ice-free because of the so-called North Atlantic Current. This current is one of the reasons why places like England and certain places in Scandinavia are actually much much warmer than they should be. And while the answer here was that at some point these ice sheets grow so large that they even block the current from passing, pretty much making everything here freeze completely. There's a really good explanation for how this works in a paper by Marcus Lotherstrom and it even explains how a very similar mechanism involving ice sheets blocking warmer currents very likely also caused a dramatic drop in temperature during the so-called Younger Dryas period. This was a period approximately 12,000 years ago when there was a very sudden drop in temperature that has been connected to various currents in the Atlantic Ocean. But how does this connect to the Milankovitch cycles and basically what exactly do they do? And so the point of this recent study was essentially to try to figure out which of these properties, eccentricity, precession or obliquity, was the one most likely responsible for guiding the cycles. 
or discovering the specific roles for each of these properties. And in order to study this, here scientists analyze approximately 900,000 years of the glaciation record, mostly focusing on independent records using oxygen isotopes collected by various teams from various ice cores. Now, in a lot of previous studies, there was actually a lot of difficulty in discovering exactly which cycle seems to do what, mostly because some of them seem to actually match. For example, cycle of precession, which can vary between 19 to 26,000 years, but is often approximately 21,000 years, seems to match with the second harmonic of obliquity cycle. Or in other words, 41,000 divided by 2 is approximately 20,500, which is extremely close to the cycle of precession. Which means that it's hard to determine which of these cycles seems to be more important. Likewise, there's also something known as the 100,000 year problem. Essentially here, ice ages very often end at a specific interval that matches eccentricity cycles, but for reasons that are not entirely understood. In this case, eccentricity seems to change every 100,000 years, and this is when the Earth's orbit goes from being more circular to slightly more elongated. And so if we actually combine all of these cycles, we get a wave that kind of looks like this. And here, trying to compare this to glaciation periods can be very challenging. And so even today, nobody actually knows which of the cycles seems to produce the most effect. But in this new study, scientists potentially discovered the pattern that explains everything. And so here, by studying oxygen isotopes, they discovered that there was always a peak that seemed to match with very specific cycles. With transitions in glaciation periods directly aligning with certain periods in precession and obliquity. And the results here suggest that it's the precession that seems to usually trigger deglaciation. Or in other words, the wobble of the planet plays the biggest role in causing the ice ages to finally end. And so the data from the study suggests that ice ages seem to come to an end when the cycle of precession reaches its minimum. But usually during this time, the obliquity, or the tilt of the planet, starts to rise as well. Basically here, the tilt goes from approximately 22 degrees up to about 24 degrees. But intriguingly during this time, because a lot of these cycles seem to match, eccentricity is also extremely low. So essentially here, Earth has a very circular orbit. And so even though deglaciation is triggered by precession, the other cycles obviously play a big role. But intriguingly, it's the obliquity, or once again the tilt of the planet, that seems to play the biggest role in sustaining very warm interglacial periods like the one we have right now. And more importantly, once the period here drops, or once the tilt decreases once again, this is usually what starts the next ice age. In other words, the glaciation seems to be the result of obliquity. Now, as you can see from this NASA simulation, the maximum obliquity is approximately 24.5 degrees, but current obliquity is approximately 23.5 degrees. And it's actually going down. Which is, of course, because this is a part of this long-term cycle that takes approximately 41,000 years. And so very soon it's going to be approximately 23.4 degrees and eventually go down to 22.1 degrees, at which point researchers believe this is going to be the beginning of the next ice age. And here they even calculated when this is most likely going to happen. Now here there's a side note in the study suggesting that this completely ignores the greenhouse emissions and a lot of human-caused climatic changes, but if we just look at the data based on the Milankovitch cycles, the next glaciation period should start in approximately 11,000 years. At this point, the axial tilt is going to be almost at its minimum. Oh, the here there's obviously a really intriguing question. So those human emissions and stuff, how exactly would this affect the glaciation period? I mean, there's obviously no answer for this yet, but it would be very intriguing to find out if we're essentially causing some kind of a cancellation of the glaciation period and if it might never really happen. Which is, I guess, maybe, possibly, um, good news, kind of? At least for the Northern Hemisphere. But this is a pretty loaded topic and there are a lot of uncertainties here, and so obviously there's no answer. But I guess the other unanswered question here is really in regards to why this happens. Or to be more specific, why does obliquity seems to sustain these warm periods and seems to cause ice ages to start? Well, one of the potential answers provided here is really in regards to the total energy planet Earth receives over the year. If we combine the entire energy in summertime, especially at high latitudes, it's much, much higher when the tilt is over 24 degrees, and is much lower when the tilt gets closer to 22 degrees. And so here, because in summertime, Earth receives less energy, it basically starts to cool down and eventually freeze, or at least start forming these huge glacial deposits. Interestingly, we know that on Mars, something very similar happens pretty much every few years, because of a misbalance between northern and southern hemisphere, which on Mars, instead of producing glaciation, 
actually produces enormous dust storms. And so this energy balance between the north and the south might be super important. But when it comes to axial precession or the wobble, it just seems to have a lot of influence during peak summer times, especially in the mid to high latitudes. And so as a result, during certain periods, Earth receives way more heat and thus causes deglaciation to start. But here even eccentricity plays a bit of a role too, with its biggest influence basically being on precession, and specifically the amplitude of precession. In other words, it seems to change the intensity of the wave, thus causing the precession to have more effects. So definitely a pretty cool study. But then there's one more thing I wanted to mention. So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that for this study, they used the value for the precession to be 21,000 years. However, a lot of other studies seem to go with 23,000. And if you actually go to a lot of NASA websites, sometimes they list this as 26,000. And well, at first this might seem confusing, but that's because generally, calculated precession is exactly 26,000 years. But because of gravitational interactions with a lot of other planets, the real cycle goes between 19,000 and 23,000 years and does change over time. Basically, the actual period depends on which planet do what. Now, in this study, they chose the cycle to be 21,000 years, which is basically right in the middle. But because we know it can be 19,000 or 23,000, there's still maybe just a little bit of uncertainty when it comes to matching precession cycles with the observational data. In other words, even though the evidence from the study seems to be pretty good, there's still a possibility that maybe this is just way more complicated and there's actually something else at work. But at least for now, this is still a pretty cool explanation and basically suggests that in the next 11,000 years, our planet might begin its next glaciation period. We'll definitely come back and discuss these concepts in more detail in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.